The financial crisis um, was a worldwide phenomenon. There was no, you couldn't really correlate what style of regulation um, or structure of regulation there was in any particular country, whether it was an integrated regulator like the FSA or a Twin Peaks regulator like Australia or Canada. You couldn't definitely say one style of regulation worked and another one didn't. Um, you know, the changes that are in, in the coming into place now with a, a different form of Twin Peaks for the UK allows a concentration on prudential regulation or consumer protection regulation in a different form. Um, and I think that's a great opportunity to focus on different issues there. In particular, I was on the consumer protection side and the financial crime and enforcement side. Um, I think there's a lot that can be done there, better for the future. The FSA has admitted the mistakes of the past, and it's important now it builds on that learning experience and gets on with the new model of regulation in this country. And so from a consumer's perspective, I mean, what, what are the, the changes that we will see um, that will answer those previous criticisms? Well, a more uh, dedicated consumer-centric financial conduct authority um, which I would hope, uh, you know, obviously I've moved on from there, so I, I'm leaving this to other people now to take on the development, but it, that will be more proactive in its interventions, uh, that will look more widely um, at what is going on in, in the consumer arena, uh, will listen more to you know, putting consumers' views at the centre of what it does. Um, but I mean, it's that point proactive, we'll step in earlier. With that comes risks, by the way, because obviously earlier interventions involve less of an evidence base. That's quite controversial. But we do have a moment in history now where we can change, change the style of consumer regulation in this country. And a big part of that, too, is that tougher enforcement environment. Um, and I think you know, that is something that I've been very keen on developing. Come to bringing in the criminal law in the insider dealing sphere, which wasn't a place the FSA had been before. That's all part of that tougher approach. But, you know, there are controversies around this. Not everybody in the city thinks that's the right way to approach yeah. things. Um, insider dealing, I mean, it is a very interesting one, isn't it? Because, as I'm sure uh, you know, an awful lot of people just think that is something that just happens all the time. There is a lack of awareness of the yes. criminality yeah. of doing that yeah. within the city and certainly within some of the newer funds that have come up. I mean, is that is that your experience? Are we right to just think that's kind of what they do? They don't no, care. no, we're absolutely not right to think that. And that's why starting, and it's five years ago now, um, I, we led the charge to do it in a different way. and. You know, there is a, a type of market abuse which is a civil event, but there is a type of market abuse inside of doing which is a criminal event. The FSA didn't prosecute that before 2007, and that's why we've deliberately gone in that direction. I think you will see, or people will see, um, from the latest developments, from the criminal trials, uh, from the other things that we're doing, that that's been taken enormously seriously, and we really have made be it. it a, made people aware in the financial services sector that they really can be prosecuted for this and they really can go to prison. And that's a journey. That's a journey that's going to go on forever. It's not, you know, not just a bit of a moment of time in history, not just a bit of strategy. It's a lifelong strategy um, for in the, the financial in the regulator. The positive th things that will come out of this terrible uh, period um, because the really the, 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 the numbers of prosecutions or successful prosecutions in, uh, in financial crime and white collar crime is really low. Yeah. And and it, and it does set up a sense in the general public that you know law law is used against uh, uh, ordinary folk, but the, yes. the, there are like a if class. You rise uh, in top, uh, you'll yes. be banged up within yeah. Yeah. Hours. If you're fiddling yeah. your your social security, you'll get done. But if you're actually fiddling it uh, at a much grander scale, then it's too big to be to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. And that and that sets up um, you know it, it undermines confidence in law, and it's very very important that we get it right. And, and, and it's wonderful. And, and, and it's Margaret's played a, a wonderful role in that. Yeah. Yes. But it's not, it's not something, yeah, it's not something that you can change overnight. It, as oh. I say, it's a journey and it will take time to do. Because not least, because of course the criminal justice system and the civil justice mm. system, it takes time to play yeah. these things through. People have rights, obviously defendants have rights, yeah. um, and they must avail themselves of those rights. But we've been incredibly dogged about bringing our cases through. Uh, the FSA has three criminal trials this year in Southwark Crown Court. The only cases that are taking place during <coughs> the Olympics are the FSA's cases. Yeah. Um, whether, I mean, and we have to be prepared to lose those cases, and we have to be prepared to see the, the articles that the press write about how we've had a setback. Uh, this is why I say this is a, a strategy for all time, 
because these cases, I absolutely agree with you, it is not right, I know, that serious professionals in the city should escape justice whilst the yeah. man in the street, you know, for a fairly minor event, um, can mm -hmm. have the full force of the criminal law. And I've talked about criminals in suits, um, and, you know, I take this incredibly seriously, and we've put an awful lot of resource and effort into this area. And it's not a victimless crime. It is absolutely it? not it's a victimless not crime. It affects all of us, mm -hmm. everybody, you know, your, your pension funds, uh, your unit trusts, mm -hmm. everything um, is impacted by the fact that some people have a one-way bet. And yeah. we've got to carry on with this strategy forever.